You know what I recently realized? I've never made meatloaf on these videos. Actually, I did once, it was a turkey meatloaf. Today I'm making a regular classic meatloaf and I'm gonna make two and that way if you want to, you can freeze one. I'm starting with four slices of white sandwich bread, tear it into, you know, chunks. Doesn't really matter, doesn't need to be too fine. You're gonna soak it in some milk and that'll really break it down. The bread serves to lighten up your mixture and make it not too dense when it cooks together. All of the ingredients might seem like a lot, but remember we're making two eight and a half by four and a half inch meatloafs in pans. That's fine, that's fine. I said it didn't need to be too fine. I'm not gonna go crazy, but of course I'm not stopping because that's my obsessive personality. Cover it with a half a cup of milk, whole milk, to soften it. You can use bread crumbs too. Fresh bread crumbs, so you want something fresh. The fresh, light bread helps keep this light. Let it sit for about 30 seconds. I'm squishing this just a little bit because I don't really want big chunks of bread in my meatloaf. Make sure that it's all moistened by the milk. Then you can add three pounds total meat, one and a half of ground beef, and one and a half of ground pork. Some people like to put ground veal in their meatloaf too. You can do that if you want. Set this aside. You don't want to over mix it, it'll get tough. So just set it aside and then you'll mix everything together at the last minute. Two onions, minced. Sometimes when I'm making a meatloaf, I prefer to saute my onions, but this works as well. You just mince them really fine so they cook while the meatloaf is cooking. My kids do not like meatloaf. I don't know why. Is there something like not appealing about it? Whew. Those are some pungent onions. My goodness. They can go into the bowl with the meat. Okay. You know, I feel like there's too much onion, so I'm not gonna use all of it because I don't want it overwhelming. Use about a cup and a half total. Six cloves of garlic, you wanna mince those two. Okay. This looks like about a tablespoon of garlic. I'm not gonna say I condone using that pre-chopped garlic, but I know some people do use it, so mm, I'll just look the other way. Nice. This actually looks more like two tablespoons now that I look at it. That makes sense. Three cloves of garlic is a tablespoon, yeah. Then a cup of chopped parsley. Add your parsley to the bowl. half a cup of chili sauce. This is three quarters of a cup total, and I'm gonna save a quarter cup to glaze the tops. Then half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. A lot of flavor going on in here. I'm just gonna mix this a tiny bit. Actually, no, I lied, I'm not gonna mix it. I did mix it, I shouldn't. Two large eggs. Then you mix everything by hand. I like to start it off just using my spatula, just a little bit, and then go move on to my hands. You need to add some seasoning. So one and a half teaspoons of salt, coarse salt, and a half a teaspoon of pepper. That's it. Now, hands. Nice, clean hands, remember, and mix it all together. You wanna gently but thoroughly mix all of your ingredients together. You'll definitely have more control if you use your hands and you'll have to mix it less, which is key, because the more you mix, the denser that your meatloaf will be, and you don't really want it to be dense. You certainly want it to hold together, but you don't want it to be dense. Let's just put it that way. Oh, it smells so good. The cheese and the Parmesan are adding a delicious sort of Italian twist. So divide your mixture in two even pieces. them into logs very gently, so don't overwork it. I think that that's key here. I think I've said it several times, but I really mean it. So form them into logs and then just sort of lift them into the pans. You don't need to press them into the corners. Don't pat them. Just place them gently in. Have your oven preheating to 350. Bake these for 50 minutes and then you're gonna take them out and brush the chili sauce on top. So after 50 minutes of cooking, you wanna brush the tops. This will give a nice, delicious, kind of sweet, spicy glaze on top. And then you're gonna cook it for another 10 minutes or so. The juices need to be running clear, 
and, it, and if you're using an instant read thermometer, it should read 160 degrees. Mm. Smells good. Pop it back in the oven, about 10 more minutes. Yum. You're probably gonna wanna let this sit for about five minutes. Let's see, do I feel like I can cut it now? I kinda wanna taste it. I'm gonna live life on the edge. At home, you should wait five minutes. Just allows it to set just a tiny bit. But I am hungry and I wanna try it. You can actually take the whole meatloaf out of the pan and cut it that way if you want to. But I'm not. <laughs> because I didn't let it sit long enough and I'm sure it would fall apart. Make sure that you make both of these so that you can freeze one for eating later in the month. Mm. So delicious, you guys. Really savory, super duper flavorful. So good. Your family's new favorite meatloaf. Courtesy of Sarah Carey. You can tell them I sent you. Hi guys, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to click here if you want to subscribe and click over here if you want to continue watching more great videos like this.